Oh my goodness, you guys. People of the internet, Retro Raconteur here. We did it, man. We did it. We reached Grand Master as a free-to-play player. As you can see here, we actually ended on a six-game winning streak to do it. I'm going to break down everything for you guys today. I'm going to show you my deck that I used to get here, and then I'm going to take you through the last three games, which were all so incredibly hype. We actually ended up getting matched up against three Grandmasters en route to getting this. We won all three of those games against Grandmasters. It was absolutely epic. All right, so here is the deck that we were running. Very, very fortunate to get a Bellatrix Legendary Echo. We actually somehow did this at only Spellbook level 38. I don't think we're going to be able to go much higher without actually spending some money on this game. That's one of the unfortunate things about the game. As much as I love it, and I love it so much, I actually want to spend money on it now. I want to support these developers. I just wish it wasn't so closely tied to the PvP to where you can't really rank much higher unless you're spending money on the game. I wish it was just it would just level everything out in PvP. I don't know why it, it can't do that. You know, the cards could still be things that you, you know, pay for to get your keys and all that. But it is what it is, man. So the Bellatrix Echo, I was very fortunate to get that out of a Haunted Hollow level 8 clear. Shout out to our social club, House Rack and Tour. If you guys haven't joined yet, we have a second one now as well. Check out our Discord in the video description below. But the Bellatrix Echo, I'll show you guys the cards it dropped with. It didn't really have great cards here at the start. At least card, I don't use these cards much in PvP at all, actually. But it's my first Legendary. I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and fully upgrade it. I don't care. I need this one to have something. And we ended up getting three big time. Three big time. Bomb box. Absolutely huge. Huge to get bomb box with a with a plus one boost. Cornish Pixie with a plus one boost. And then Cassandra, who you're about to see. We started using her as well. Two boost on Cassandra. So that was really helpful to get the echo right there. I added Nebulous. If you guys watched my last video on the deck, you'll see that this one it changed up a little bit. There's several cards that I swapped out. Once I hit Diamond, I started running into a lot more of the Orb of Water. It also just so happens that the Norwegian Ridgeback card is banned when I was making this run. So that removed Atmospheric Charm. I didn't need to have Atmospheric Charm. So I added this one ex instead. Expulso is great for trying to knock people out of the Orb of Water cast. It's going to help you get out of that. It's really, really helpful. And then the cats, man. I had to add these cats. I just kept running into more and more of these. And they're so annoying to deal with because you kill one and then just more come and those paired with the bomb box is huge it's huge but i didn't want to lose my monster book and i didn't want to lose the pixies i think the pixies are actually a little bit underrated if you get pixies going with bomb box they can even do a decent job against an opal or something uh, and then i also added nebulous because right now the meta in my region has just been all about thunderstorm all about thunderstorm and honestly, like, you could debate Nebulous because a lot of people, they just instantly use something to get you out of the Nebulous. So they might use Expulso, they might use Incendio to make you burn if you're going to sit in there. Uh, or they could use, like, a Port Key. Some people were running that. You could throw a Monster Book in there. There's a lot of ways to break the Nebulous, unfortunately. However, I do still think it's worth it for those times where maybe somebody throws this out of desperation, they're out of MP. Then you drop... The nebulous and you're you're just going to be protected from that cassandra i added her because the higher and higher i got i started to notice more and more people weren't using ron in that first slot like so many are in gold and uh platinum cassandra is so strong against anything that's spamming a lot of little minions <laughs> to attack you even the Opali, Cassandra will do a good job against the Opali. You just have to knock the Opali into her little ring using something like Expulso. So Monster Book is a fantastic card. Fantastic card. It's really fast. You see, I got mine up to level 10, which is huge. And then I got the Bomb Box to level 10, plus one because of the Echo. I mean, I don't think people need to know any more about the Bomb Box. Everybody knows how strong that card is. Pairing that, I mean, all these these four right here just pair so incredibly well together. Incendio, I feel like, is a must to deal with any kind of ads that are surrounding you. If you get surrounded by, like, a stack of monster books or something like the cats or uh, if the opal eye does get in too close, there are a lot of situations where Incendio is going to be great for you. And then because I'm running the Bellatrix Echo, I eventually had to add Thunderstorm myself. 
I took out the stack of monster books. Although I still really like that card. I think you can make a good argument for that one too. Unfortunately, it costs one more MP. Plus, with the lightning, I can go Hermione. I can go Hermione in that second slot. So roughly midway through the fight, I try to time it to where maybe they've just used a Nebulous. And I know they're out of it. Throw Hermione. Throw the Double Thunderstorm. It's just really, really, really powerful. And then Hagrid in the last spot. A lot of times at the end of a fight, you're starting to run out of mobility. Your health is really low. And Hagrid gives you both of those things. It also just so happens that I was able to get my Hagrid up to a level 10. So it worked out very nicely that he was my companion here. So getting that little bit of extra health plus the extra mobility that Hagrid gives you can be super clutch and also protect you from a number of different attacks. So that is pretty much what we were running. Let's dive into some games now and you guys can see how these last three went, which all three of them were so incredibly hype. It was absolutely insane. All right, so let's take a look at the first match here, which was against a Grandmaster using Snape. And I did not think I was gonna win this fight, you guys. I was just in admiration. I was kind of in awe of the style of a Snape user. It's, it's really, really interesting. So you can see they start off with, I can already tell they're gonna be using that Accio a lot because they wanna pull me in close. I'm trying to get rid of Kevin as fast as I can because that is the last thing we need. And then of course any Snape is gonna be running a time turner. So that was actually a really good job by the monster book right there. That was huge. And then we almost have his first, I was about to call it an echo. I mean, I guess it's like a, a clone. We almost defeated the first clone and finally get it right there. Cassandra's still up for us, which is good. But I mean, right now we're down a thousand HP. Right there. That was huge, man. That was huge. Really good damage from the Death Eater right there. And at this point, I kind of just have to concede Cassandra. He pulls me in again with Accio. Which, I, I mean, he was just like, just ripping me with that Sectum Simpra. So I'm still down about 400, but that was a big push right there by me, thanks to the Death Eater. Alright, so I'm like, okay, I don't think I've seen him use Nebulous yet. And then, of course, he has a Nebulous. I go ahead and use the Monster Book, so at least he's going to take some bolts from it. Then he throws out Ron. I try and protect, protect Cassandra with Nebulous. I get it. Death Eater spawn at the perfect time. The perfect time. He pulls me in again with Accio. I was feeling pretty comfortable right there. He pulls me in with the Accio though. It just starts shredding me. I don't know why I used the Bombastic Bomb right there. That was probably a really bad play. I fire the Monster Book because I see his health so low. I'm like, I need to get that Monster Book right on him. And then I just get the cat going. I know I've got the HP advantage. I just got to outlast him. And we did. We did. But man, props. Incredible player. That's a style I actually really want to experiment with. Is playing Snape and running the time turner. So fun. Oh, and excuse me. It looks like that player was not a Grandmaster. The Snape user. We did play another person who was a Snape Grandmaster right before that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another Grandmaster user running a Bellatrix Legendary. See how this fight goes. It's basically Bellatrix Legendary versus Bellatrix Legendary here. And I'm telling you, man, all three of these final fights were so ridiculously close. Remember, draft of peace, though. I was comfortable. I was like, even if I lose, not the end of the world. Again, we were at a disadvantage HP-wise here. He throws out the bomb. I've got Monster Book. And then really early use on the companion right there. So I go ahead and bring out Cassandra. I, I should say early for Malfoy game. I'm not real sure what the thought process was right there. Maybe try to get them going with the bombs. So then Cassandra helps me take them out. And then he he takes her out pretty quick too, unfortunately. So both companions are down. I know he's not running a Fred and, Fred and George or anything because of the meter, which... I ran into a couple of Fred and Georges. I think I lost to both of them too on this run. And right here, I've already got the Pixies out. So we're kind of just letting the MP build, letting him deal with the Pixies right now. I hate when I don't have bombs on the field. So I see he throws that. I've got to immediately get rid of the bomb box. Now I've, I'm in big trouble. We got bomb box plus the stack. We get him with Incendio. And then we also get a Death Eater. 
Death Eater's gonna help me finish off that monster book. Now he gets his Death Eater too. Look at the cats though. Look at the cats working on the Death Eater. They're just so annoying to deal with. Do you see that move by me right there? I know my camera's kind of blocking it a little bit. But I kind of did this little dodge. To oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that was so much damage right there. Yeah, I did this little, uh, I actually took the Nebulous Cloud, the aggro, away from the Death Eater. Because the Death Eaters, you guys, they're powerful, but they're not very smart, man. <laughs> they're not very smart. They'll just walk right through all sorts of hazards. So I could see he was about to walk right by it. We get two Death Eaters on the field now. Another stack of Monster Books, but we got the Death Eaters to help. I decide to save the Incendio. I see he's got Bomb Box over there. I've got to take out the Bomb Box. That's why I sent the Monster Book over, which unfortunately it didn't actually even get it. That was a wasted Incendio right there. I got a little greedy. Got a little greedy trying to end the fight. And you can see he's still like running around trying to deal with the cats. So I think, hey, let's just throw a Bomb Box. Now I'm feeling pretty good, but watch. Look, look how much I'm up. Watch how close he comes to, to pulling this back. What a push this was. He sends Ron, he sends the stack, he sends two Death Eaters. I do Expulso and it has, it doesn't help. Look at that, man. I'm getting zapped by both of them. I actually thought it was over. I actually thought it was over because I know how much power <laughs> those Death Eaters have. Hagrid's already done. Now finally I get my Death Eaters and I'm like, I just gotta retreat, I gotta retreat, I gotta retreat. He, I, I knew I had heard a thunderstorm. Let me get in the Nebulous. And now it's just 1v1, man. It's 1v1 with me having a pretty good advantage. But he sends out the stack. Now, I had to make a decision. I've got Incendio. Do I go for him? I did. Took him down to 121. I still don't know if it was the right call. Or if I should have just finished off the books in front of me. But then I, I, I'd love to tell you guys that I knew the time was ticking. And so that's why I wanted to do more damage. But the truth is, I was so into the fight, I wasn't even paying attention to the time. It worked out very well. I did know that I had him at much lower health than I was, and so I just needed to buy as much time as I could with those monster books and keep inflicting whatever damage I could. All right, then we have our final match here. This was the match to get to Grandmaster. This was against a fellow Diamond player, and they were running a Hermione deck. And this is one where I look almost very, very even, 3125 to 3055. This is one that I almost lost. I got I get ahead pretty pretty comfortably here in a minute, and then they do an incredible job of nearly bringing it back. So you can see we're kind of playing the game right now of thunderstorm, trying to get the other one out. I get the bombs going, so they cast thunderstorm with Hermione. I know I've got to prevent some of this damage. That was that was a great play by them. I finally break us out of it with Expulso, but a lot of the damage is done. So that completely eliminated Cassandra. Fortunately, we got Hermione too. So he's got a 400 HP advantage right there. And just made it even more with that Apugno. Apugno's a little bit underrated, I feel like, man. Apugno plus the Broom, and then I don't have Nebulous right here. So I'm just throwing out all the support to try and help spread the damage around. We got a Death Eater on the field. I know this Death Eater's probably not going to do much because he's he's trapped in there. I do the Incendio to force him out, though, and look what happens. Look what happens. I feel like people underestimate the Death Eaters. Like, I don't know. I, he chose to kind of fly away, which I get why he did it, but... So we get caught in the orb. I fire the Expulso to get out. And he's still just, like, ignoring the Death Eater. I, I don't know. I know they don't have a lot of health, but people just ignore them too much. Nebulous to break a little bit of the damage. He gets the Incendio on me. I have to move. Now, look at this. I got a... I mean, not a huge lead, but I got a fairly comfortable lead. He also has Cassandra going, though. Now I get the Death Eater, but he gets... Oh, no, he didn't get it in Orb of Water. Look at this, man. I'm up 1,000 to 300 or so. And then he takes... Oh, that was nice play right there by him. He gets rid of both the Death Eaters. I wasn't out of moves, so I don't know if I misclicked right there or what. Now look how close it is. Now look how close it is. He gets Ron out, so I've got to bring out Hagrid. 
trying to get rid of Ron here. Just, just trying to fight for my life and get Ron off the field. That's my main focus. We get another thunderstorm. I go to the back corner. That was a misplay, right by him, right there. That incendio. I bet he wishes he would have held it. But now look how close it is. Look how close it is. Oh my gosh! It was so ridiculously close. When he did the apugno, I thought I was done. I thought I was done when he did the Apugno plus the Broomstick. But what an absolutely epic journey it was. In fact, I streamed it live right here on YouTube. I'll link to that whole stream here on the right side of your screen. Check that one out next. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.